Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Me, and in this Cinema 4D to Unity tutorial, I want to talk about exporting level of detail. Um, now, I've already done a tutorial about the level of detail object inside Cinema 4D, so if you'd like to know a little bit more about that in detail, I suggest you go back and have a look at that tutorial. But this is specifically dealing with getting the, the level of detail to the Unity game engine. So let's just jump straight in. In my scene, I've um, well, I've I've got a scene which I've already imported into Unity, so it gives us an environment to walk around. And in this environment, I have um, created some level of detail objects. So I've got this animal low poly, which is this. So obviously, not very much detail. Um, and then we've got a mid poly object, a bit more detail, and then we've got our high poly object, which is this. Um, so what would be the point of this, you know? Well, the idea is that if the camera's near to an object, you want to be displaying this high poly model. And it, the further away you get, you're not going to be able to see... Oh, we've gone through the wall. You're not going to be able to see a lot of that detail anyway. So you swap that model out for a low, lower poly model. And what this basically means is there's less overhead on the system because it's not having to draw as many polys. So it makes sense that if I'm this far away, you're, uh, the, the computer is not still rendering a really high, highly detailed model because you're not going to be seeing that detail anyway. So you swap it out for something a lot lower. So with that said, uh, let's go back and unhide all our models so they're all laying on top of each other like this. And we'll, um, we'll put it into a level of detail object. So uh, if I choose my high poly model and then go here and I'll oh, select the uh, level of detail object that will become a parent of that and then we can dump everything else in afterwards. Now it's important to note that uh, if I go to my LOD and switch the criteria to uh, screen size V which is vertical the further away I get so we can only see the high poly model now the further away it swaps it out for a um, the next one, and then further away it swaps it out for the lower one. So you can see how that's working now. Um, the order matters. So I've got my high poly at the top, and then mid poly, then low poly, and that's the um, order that uh, the LOD object expects you to um, put them in there. If it was the other way around, you'd be seeing the low poly up close, and then the further away you got, you'd be seeing the, the um, high poly model, which would be incorrect. So that's just something to note. So, how about getting this into Unity then? Um, so let me switch over to Unity. Uh, here's my scene. I've, I've baked it just so it looks a little bit nicer. And I've also got a um, first person controller in there so we can walk around and um, all the rest of it. So let's get our LOD object in. Now, how does Unity expect to receive level of detail objects? Well, if we look at the documentation, and go to the bottom here, um, we can see that it says at the bottom the naming convention. If you create a set of meshes with names ending in uh, underscore LOD0, underscore LOD1, underscore LOD2, etc., for as many LOD levels as you like, a LOD group for the, uh, for the object with appropriate settings will be created automatically on import. So now that's always been the case uh, in, in Unit. Well, not always, but um, if I was to say take this animal high poly and then put an underscore LOD zero. Oh, excuse me. And then for my next object, make a underscore LOD um, one and then an LOD two. When I export this object called LOD, Unity would automatically pick up that these three things that are inside this LOD object are um, you know, the same object, it needs an LOD group to swap these objects out. Now, the only problem with this is if I wanted an intermediate um, uh, model in between LOD 0 and LOD 1 here, I would put my new object in here and call it LOD 1, and then I'd have to rename everything underneath it, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But with Cinema 4D R19, 
we have some extra export options in the uh, FBX export. Now, before Cinema 4D R19, if you're using 18 or 17 or something like that, you would just have to manually name these, and it would work exactly the same. But yes, you would have to, um, uh, you know, click on this and name it underscore LOD0 and so on. Um, so it can still be done in R18, R17, R16. Um, this can still be done. I mean, it doesn't depend on this LOD object, really. Um, that could just be a null group, and then you could um, name it like it sets out here in the documentation. But in R19, if your objects are in an LOD object, and you click the appropriate um, export setting, you don't have to worry about this naming convention whatsoever. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to select my LOD object, and I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX, and then I'm going to go to where my um, exports live, and I'm going to create a new export called LOD, and then press Save. And then in my FBX export settings, and this is specifically for um, R19, we can, uh, well, I'm going to check selection only. So that means that it won't export the entire document. It will just export what I've got selected, which is this, oh, excuse me, this LOD object, which I selected before I went to the export. And this is what we need to check, LOD name suffix. So but where it uh, lays out here, LOD0, LOD1, this means that this checkbox being on means that it'll automatically add those um, the naming conventions to the end of it. So uh, let's just hit OK. So we've got um, normals checked and LOD and selection only. So I'm going to select OK. The export should be done. So if we go back to Unity, you can see it now working out the export. And if I grab our LOD, I'm just going to uh, use the legacy mode for materials. That probably doesn't matter to you guys. Um, so yeah. We've got our LID object. I'm just going to drag that into our scene now. And you can see that it's come in. And it's automatically added a component, which is called LOD group. Now, let's get closer to our object. And you can see here that it, um, it already is displaying LOD 0. And if I grab the camera on the LOD group and drag it backwards, you can see we're moving backwards. And as we hit this threshold here, um, it will swap out the model for the green one. So now we're on LOD1 as this is signifying. And go back a little bit more. Oh, there we go. It's swapped out for the um, low poly LOD. Now you can actually change these values here. So I'm going to actually have a little play with these. So we've got a high detail here. And I want to swap out, swap out for our slightly less detail around here. So I'm going to grab it in between these two and just drag this up slightly to maybe there. So it swaps out. And then the further away we get, I'm going to say about, ooh, I'm going to say about there. I think I'll drag this up to here. So now when we zoom back, yeah. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. And then you can see right at the end, it says cold here. So if I um, just go to this view quickly and zoom out, you can see it goes to LOD2. And then when it gets to the cold stage, which is very, very far out, actually, I think I'll drag this up just to show you. We'll drag this up to here. So LOD2, and then it's cold. It means that it's not rendered at all um, because it's too far away. Now you can define how far these distances are. So now we've got that set up, let's actually just press play and see what happens. So, okay, we've got a high detail model here. And if I get nice and close up and go, oh yeah, that looks good. And then we'll zoom out, we'll uh, step backwards. And as I get further away, it swapped it out for the not so high uh, poly model. And even further away, we've got the really low poly model there. And it works the other way as I get closer. And there we go. So that's pretty much the long and short of it, of how it works. So there's one more thing to note, actually. If I select my LOD object, you'll see this little um, uh, exclamation mark here saying active LOD bias is 2. 
uh, distances are, are adjusted accordingly. So we we can um, actually change this, I think, in, let's have a look. I think it's project settings player. It might not be. Other settings. Da, 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 da. You'll have to excuse me a moment. It might be in quality. Here we go. Cascades blitz. LOD bias. So it's currently set to two. So let's see what happens if I put this down to 0 0.1. You can see that our model has disappeared now. So let's put it to one and see what happens. So let's just press play there. Okay, you can see now that it's it has a bias towards one end. So we've got really high poly here. And then when I zoom out, it flicks much, much earlier to our mid-range poly model and much, much, much earlier to our low poly model. And as I zoom out even more, it completely disappears. So that's kind of like a global setting for how quickly things fall away or um, how, how, you know, if you want to extend that distance. So you can do that globally with the LOD bias. Uh, I'm going to put it back to what it was, which was uh, two, I believe, because I thought that was pretty good. Um, yeah, there we go. We're back at two, and it should be back to what we had before. Excellent. So, on the export settings of Cinema 4D, the this LOD object is needed um, if you're automatically adding the suffixes on export because it recognizes there's an LOD object and you've checked the automatic LOD. So once you check that automatic LOD, it looks for any LOD object and goes, ah, there we go. Anything inside that, give it a suffix. And like before, um, like I said before, if you're using previous to uh, Cinema 4D R19, you're going to have to do that manually. But that's pretty much the uh, long and short of that, guys. Um, that's how you export your LODs from Cinema 4D R19 very, very quickly, works wonderfully, and helps to optimize your game. Okay, cheers, guys. Thanks for listening. As always, check out the Digital Meat website at digitalmeat.uk. You can follow me on social media, Facebook and whatnot. I'll put that in the... Um, description and if you'd like to help support digital me uh, uh, there's a patreon page and there'll be a link on screen and in the description at the end of the video cheers for listening guys bye